Hi. So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing actually two books because I found that they really play off one another very well and that the ideas in one um, connect in a very interesting way to the ideas in the other. So the first is a very well-known one. It's uh, The War of Art, Break Through the Blocks and Win Your Inner Creative Battles by uh, Stephen Pressfield. The other is a little more obscure. Uh, it's called The Power of Limits, Proportional Harmonies in Nature, Art, and Architecture by, uh, I have only ever seen the author's name written, but it's, uh, I believe, Gyorgy Dorsey, or Dorsey. Dorsey? In any case, um, so Stephen Pressfield is an author, um, and he writes a very uh, persuasive book on the creative process and um, overcoming one's internal resistance. Uh, there's, a, there's an amazing quote from, I think, the first chapter where he says, uh, Hitler found it easier to set all of Europe on fire than to face a blank page. And uh, he talks about the, the importance of facing the blank page in very frank terms and uh, very heroic terms. Um, and in that way, I think he has one of the most influential and uh, worth reading books for anyone who finds it difficult to persevere in an artistic endeavor. Uh, Gyorgy Dopsi, um, that's how I'm going to pronounce his name, the author of uh, The Power of Limits, uh, he writes from an architect's perspective, and he writes about um, about harmonies in, well, nature, art, and architecture, as he says. He talks about harmonic proportions, um, and he introduces the concept of dinergy, which, uh, to his mind, is the idea that beauty arises from the tension between force and resistance. So, uh, as he as he puts it, when force meets resistance, beauty is the natural result. Now, if you saw my review on um, the design uh, design in nature, that might be a somewhat familiar concept. Um, but what I really found interesting was the way that the this concept of dynergy, um, the concept that uh, force meeting resistance and overcoming it in the in the way that uh, expanded itself the least, uh, that that ties in to how Stephen Pressfield writes about the resistance that we face, um, and he talks about resistance as you might say the uh, the artists or the authors or the architects probably ego um, resisting the uh, the possibility of making not good art and the the fear we have of falling short of our vision. Um, but what I found fascinating about these books in uh, in conjunction is the idea that the resistance that we face as artists is a necessary part of the creative process, and that it's only when there is a tension between our tendency to self-criticize and to feel that we are falling short of our creative vision that we are able to actually um, live up to our potential and to realize our vision in the, in the best possible form. So, these two books together are, I think, a fascinating meditation on aesthetics uh, and on the, on the nature of aesthetics, but very, in very different ways. Uh, in The Power of Limits, an awful lot of time is spent talking about both musical harmonies, and uh, there was a very large portion which I feel went over my head a little bit. <laughs> Um, and I think if I had had more of maybe a musical or a sacred geometry background, I might have gotten more out of it. But uh, the author spends a lot of time comparing the proportions of insect bodies 
So uh, insects have these uh, various segmented bodies, um, and he looks a lot at the uh, at the various proportions that one finds there, and comparing those to musical proportions, which is which is quite fascinating. It's a very different book from um, from. Uh, design in Nature, which I reviewed earlier, because uh, The Power of Limits, um, it, it talks about the same kind of pattern that's uh, approached in The Power of Limits, but it talks about it uh, in a very geometry-based, I would say, way, which makes sense for an architect to think in terms of geometry rather than uh, force flow diagrams. So as someone who is classically trained in engineering, I think I got more out of the, the force flow diagrams than the architecture approach. But I think they were both talking about very much the same concept. And what I love about this is that uh, Stephen Pressfield, who wrote this very um, accessible book on the struggle of the artist and of the difficulty of staying with a creative endeavor and of uh, being true to your muse, that it seems as though that was talking about the same concept, this concept that there is a, a creative force and that it has to encounter resistance in order to be realized in a useful way. It's like the, the yin and yang of creativity. There has to be a uh, a vision or um, or something to be realized or something in motion and there has to be something resisting that motion um, and that that together creates what we recognize as beauty um, that was really it was a fascinating look at uh, at at a number of interrelated concepts, but all, all of them around how new things come into being and how, uh, how beauty comes into being. I remember, for example, uh, another thing that uh, The Power of Limits spends a lot of time on is traditional, uh, traditional designs for basket weaving. <laughs> um, and the idea that these baskets appeal to our instinct for aesthetics because the materials that were being woven into these baskets had a natural tendency to resist uh, the force of the, uh, of the person weaving the basket and that if too much force was applied then the, uh, then the reeds or the boughs would just break. Um, so there had to be a balance between the force of wanting to shape the basket your way and the uh, the resistance of the materials, um, which is, it's not just a great metaphor for uh, the artist's struggle. It's in some way, it uh, it probably is a necessary component of the artist's struggle. And um, reading about Darcy's conception of dynergy and Pressfield's uh, talk about the interplay between the muse and the uh, the resistance though that was really um, I found those books to be more than the sum of their parts um, and even though I found uh, the power of limits to be a pretty challenging book to really uh, to to absorb because a lot of it was about um, geometrical and musical concepts that I had no background for. Um, it gave a context and it gave a grounding to uh, what Stephen Pressfield talked about, which was a lot more of a, a spiritual story than a, a story about force meeting resistance in a... Um, in a concrete example, such as an artisan weaving a basket out of uh, out of material that could only bend so much, so I I liked I, well I, I I liked the war of art very much. 
I mean, that's a book that I do return to when I need some inspiration. The Power of Limits, I liked having read it, but I did find it a quite challenging book. Um, but in the understanding and in the uh, realization that it provided for um, the war of art, I found it immensely valuable. And uh, I would really, I would particularly, um, if you're interested in reading one of these, I would definitely, um, I'd encourage you to think about picking up the other because they seem very much to be looking at similar concepts from very different perspectives and uh, giving an opportunity to gain a deeper understanding because of those different perspectives.